my honor to introduce our speaker for today, who is Miss Cecile Hansen. She is a descendant within the family of Chief Self. She has served as an advocate and elected chair for the you see, I didn't take my glasses off. Oh, sorry. The elected chair for the Duwamish tribe since 1975, where she originally got involved because her brother was arrested for fishing on the Duwamish River. I got lots of stories about that. Awesome. So I won't say anything else about that because she has lots of stories about it. Over the past 40 years, she has led um, the struggle of the Duwamish to correct injustices facing them, including the loss of their traditional lands. Y'all know the Duwamish lands, where we're at right now, was Duwamish land. All of Seattle, Duwamish land. Most of King County. Duwamish land. Uh, the loss of their fishing rights on the Duwamish River, and maybe most significantly, challenging the federal government's refusal to recognize them as a legitimate historic tribe. So we're very honored to have Ms. Hansen here with us today um, to learn from her wisdom and her 40 years of struggle for justice. So let's give her a warm highlight welcome. Thank you for the, uh, the warm uh, um, reception I'm getting today. Um, I'm here to speak on the behalf of the Duwamish tribe. And if you never remember anything, remember that Duwamish means the people of the inside. That's what Duwamish means. So if you, can't, if you don't remember, whatever thing I share within the next hour or so, Duwamish means the people of the inside. But I'll tell you more why they're inside. Um, as I get started, I just, I'm so delighted to be able to share what I've known in the last 40 years, or 41 years, regarding Duwamish. One of the things that I have been told, and I tell my tribal council, we have sovereignty, and I'm going to share about sovereignty with you. They say that every tribal nation possesses the right to a land base, possessions and control unquestionable and honored by other nations to exist without fear, but with freedom. Self-governance, the ability and authority to make decisions regarding all matters concerning the tribe without the approval or agreement of others, and I'm meaning the federal government. But I'll get into that, okay? You know there's people back in DC? Okay. This includes the ways and methods of decision-making, social and political, and other areas of life. An economic base and resources. The control and use and development of resources, business, and industries in the tribal chooses, wherever the tribe just chooses to, to reside. This includes resources that support the tribal way, way of life, includes the practice of spiritual ways, period. A distinct language and historical and cultural identity and the tribes defined and describes in its history, including the impact of historical experience in race, racism, tribal culture, worldview, and traditions. Now, when I started out in, um, when I started out many years ago, um, I said, to my, well, no, I'm gonna I'm go back. Okay, this is about losing. <laughs> I'm gonna, I better get. I better go back to uh, 1974. Yeah, 74. Um, I was just a stay-at-home mom raising three daughters. We, uh, my husband had was in the, had served in the service, and we bought a home in which was um, Riverton Heights. It is now Tukwila. So we bought a home there. So I'm just a stay at home. My husband said, you don't have to work. He went to work for the Port of Seattle, and I just had to run the home. We bought a home, we, I was, the kids went to school, um, and I just stayed at home, and I loved to cook and garden and all that good stuff. And uh, my brother, my dear brother, who was uh, fishing, that was his livelihood, to fish, and he was fishing in the Duwamish River. Anybody know where the Duwamish River is? Okay, good. Okay, that was his livelihood to, to support his family. He was married to a lady and, uh, in uh, Auburn, 
And so he used to, him, my, my cousins and my brother fished in the Duwamish River. Well, when they were fishing there in the 70s, the Department of Fisheries guys would stop him and said, you can't fish, and told my brother, you can't fish here. And my brother said, I'm Duwamish. So they would cite him, give him a ticket, and he would, before he could see that guy coming, he, he was smart enough to throw his fish up in the bank, you know, hide them so he could come back and get them. Because to sell them, so he'd have some money for his family. So he did that for a long time, and this one particular day, he showed it up at my house, and he was just upset, and I, I just, we, we talked, and I, he calmed down, and this particular day he said to me, you know, you've got to get involved. I said, to do what? Because he just got a ticket, he said, well, um, just go to a few meetings. Now, this is 1974, and having not been involved in tribal business or anything. So I, I start going to, we start meeting with the Department of Fisheries, uh, meeting with other uh, leaders. Um, and, 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 and then the, the former chair of the Duwamish tribe, his name was Willard Bill. Well, come to find out, he was not only Duwamish, but he was Muckleshoot. Ooh, that's where he's from. And I'll bring up about the Muckleshoot later. Well, anyway, so, uh, we start going to a lot of meetings, and then this is 1974. Well, the next thing, the following year, meeting with the former chair, who said he was going to resign, he wanted to go on to university and teach, because he was a teacher. I said, well, okay. So he handed me the, the chairmanship on an interim basis, and the following year they had a they had a meeting, and I was elected chair. Well, I don't. I, what does that mean? So I said, oh my gosh, I, I'm a chairman of a tribe, but I don't know what I was doing. But I didn't tell nobody that. <laughs> I didn't tell anybody, I didn't know what I was doing. But what I happened to find out, it was amazing if you, if, and this is what I learned. So my brother said, he's always telling me what to do. He said, you have to go join small tribes at Western Washington. That is an organization where there was 30, 40 tribes that joined, and there were small tribes up north that joined this organization to help them to do politically and resources to help them because they were small tribes. So I go, I joined Stowe, that's what they called it, and um, I thought to myself, you walk in there with the presence of you know what you're doing. See, nobody knows what you're doing. They can't, they, they're not going to say, well, she doesn't know what she's doing. So, so I started going to these meetings and, but I thought, the best way I'm going to learn anything, and this is good advice, just be quiet and listen. Because I was with other tribes who had been involved many years, and I thought, well, listening to them, I'll try to figure out what I'm supposed to be doing for my tribe, which is the Duwamish. I learned a lot, because these tribes that were involved at Stowe came from Oregon, I, I, at one time, I was amazed who joined this organization. But anyway, there were marvelous leaders and, and delegates that came to join Stowe. And what I learned, as I said, I listened. So, and then they they created um, they created this organization for sub non reservations. And um, in the meanwhile, getting back to the fishing thing, I said, Oh my gosh. I'm gonna, and then we start dealing about the lack of fishing. What happened was, is that we lost our right to fish. Does anybody know what the Judge Bolt case was? Few, few know. Well, what happened was, when we lost our fi right to fish, we went to court. Now, there was other tribes that I was working with, and I'll, I'll name them here, um, if I can find the list here. The list of these tribes that I start working with was the Samish tribe, Snoqualmie, Snohomish, um, Stillicum. Uh, let me see. Uh, did I say the College tribe down south? The Chinook. There was about seven, eight tribes that I start working with, and we were all fighting for resources and fishing rights. In the meanwhile, they, what happened was, because we were fighting for fishing rights, um, we lost the right to fish. 
So what we decided to do, well, we'll just go, we'll just go tell the government who we are. In the meanwhile, they, they created this, cre they created this itinerary or this rules how to prove who you are. I say today after 40 some years, no person on the face of earth has to go prove who they are. I don't care where you come from. And I spoke, or I just did a speech um, this last week. I don't care where you come from. Chinese, black, Indian people. I mean, I mean, we have a, 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 a ballpark of different people who now reside here. And why is it the Native Americans of the United States have to prove who they are? Oh, well, that's we did, because we wanted our fishing rights in the Duwamish River. So we, we started, well, we got the rules from the Department of Interior, or the, the BIA, the Bureau of Indian Affairs, and they sent these criteria that we had to prove who we are. Um, this is what we had to do. We started out in 1976, 77. We hired, we had people, our elders came out. They shared their stories about history a long time ago. Uh, we got historians that knew something about the, the city of Seattle. And they, um, but this is what we had to do. This is, this is really mind-boggling what they told us we had to do. So I'll name a few of these things. The tribe has a, a distinct community since historical times. Tribal leaders have held continuous political authority over these members in, since historical times. The tribe must have existing criteria for tribal membership. Tribal members must descend from the historical Indian tribe. Many tribal members must not already claim memberships in other federal recognized tribes. Well, I was that we always was recognized and to, to lose our fishing rights, which we did, meant we weren't recognized anymore and we couldn't fish in the, the Duwamish River. Um, it is the most endearing, not endearing, disgusting process to prove who you are because we worked from the 70s up to the 80s, probably 10, 15 years, writing these petitions to prove who we are. And it was my, and I just remembered myself, I said, oh, we'll just, we'll just go get this petition prepared, we'll present it to the federal government, and we will get recognized in three years. Guess what happened? Well, I'm gonna tell you what happened. <laughs> Because, <laughs> uh, okay, we started out in 76 or 77, our petition. We got a, a negative determination, which I don't know what that means. I have yet to find out what, why they sent this memo saying, well, you have a negative determination. Okay, 76, 77. In 2001, we get, uh, I get a phone call from the, the administration of the Clinton administration at my office at six o'clock in the evening, nine o'clock back in DC saying, we have decided to recognize you. Well, we got all excited, but that doesn't mean we got fishing rights, but we got, we got, you know, that we were gonna be recognized. So we're all upset. On Monday, I don't know where that memo is. We got this sick, look like they, it looked like it, somebody dumped it in a, a, a puddle and sent it to us. They, they put a, a, a delay or they took it away from us that Monday, so everything's on hold. So that was 2001, and that year, they took away the recognition that they gave us at that time. So today, from 2001, we're on appeal of that decision. But I like, I like to tell you that, um, as I move around in different areas, that I'm saying, who, who has the right to rec not recognize the people of, the, of Chisiel, who, and I'll tell you about that, who was a friendly man in the 80s and welcomed all the settlers to come into the to historical city. What we did was when uh, Governor Stevens showed up, 
they promise us many things. So our, our chief and our sub-chiefs, they signed a treaty. And this treaty, which guaranteed fishing rights, I'm back to the fishing rights, guaranteed hunting and fishing rights. Can you find an elk and a deer in around here? Anybody seen one lately? Anybody go hunting for an elk or a deer? Well, we, we're supposed to retain our, our, our hunting and fishing rights. Gone. But anyway, we signed a treaty, and this treaty said, well, we promise you lots of money, even a pot of gold. I don't know what that means, because I've never seen this pot of gold that the, uh, the federal government was going to hand us. So um, our chiefs and our sub-chiefs, they agreed to this uh, treaty, Point Elliot Treaty of 1855, and we signed up 54,000 acres, which is Seattle. This takes in this territory here, way up to north by the Linwood and down south here. I think the border is like Des Moines or somewhere. And then the other side of uh, Lake Washington. You don't want to in infringe on the Snoqualmie people because they're on the other side, okay? And um, so we gave up 54,000 acres. Uh, guaranteeing fishing and hunting and promising education and, and, uh, and medical, housing, a reservation. You, uh, you all see a reservation for the Duwamish tribe? No. But I must say, I have to bring it up now to the present because what we were able to do in the, um, when we were waiting for this appeal on our recognition a man and his wife approached me and he said to me, he said, Cecile, he said, I would like to get you some land. I said, what? Because we had tried to find our own headquarters. We didn't have, see, our elders a long time ago, they held their meetings and get-togethers in private homes. We're talking in the early 19, uh, eight, uh, uh, like the eight after the trees, 1855, and our people, our leaders, and then after that, 1900s, where they were meeting in houses. So they never had a little place where they could call their own. So I decided when I got, uh, was the chair, I said, we need our own place. So we had, a, we had an office in Renton. We had an office in Burien. And, uh, and I, but every time, and then we were gonna have our own headquarters at Fort Dent. You know where Fort Dent, that's a beautiful park. You everybody know where that is, Fort Dent? What? Thank you, they know. Fort, and it's, that's where they play um, all kinds of sports. It's by the river there. And it's just, if you know where South Center is? You know where South Center is? Well, I'll just go around the corner and there it is, over there. Well, we had an architect that was gonna build us a, a headquarters. And when we got, we were going through this process, that one of my tribal members and the lady that worked for me, and we were going through this process. It was weeks and we were going to meetings. The next thing I know, we were meeting with the lawyers. We had a lawyer, and the lawyer said to us, well, even if you were to have this headquarters there, you'll never own it. I said, the deal is over. If we build a complex, which is our headquarters, we want the place to be ours. Well, it happened, what happened, what the deal was, is that that park belonged to the city, and they would not give the, the land to us. But that's okay. Now getting back to old George, George is my friend, who said, I'm gonna help you get some land. Well, we, I was kind of disappointed, but I didn't want to display his offer. I said, okay. He not only found us a little piece of land, two thirds of an acre, he put the first $10,000 down. Now that's a friend. So we just geared up and we start raising money two-thirds of an acre next to the Duwamish River. That was great. Now, I say to us, and you can, you, you can take this wisdom if you want, if you want to believe me, there is no coincidence of the two places we try to find our headquarters, we end up by the river, by historical villages right across the street. So we, we raised the money, paid for the land, I think the two-thirds of an acre was over $250,000. Remember, we gave up 54,000 acre, acres. We didn't get a little res, but we got now, I like to say, two-thirds of an acre. And that's great. 
Well, we, we, I have a friend who is an architect, and he's a tribal member, not a tribal member, but he's a member of the Blackfeet, and he, he was a local person that lived here. He designed our longhouse, and that, we raised the money for that. It took us about five or six years, because you know we don't get no money from the federal government. And we were able to raise over $3 million to, to build our longhouse. So we now have our own longhouse and our culture center on the Duwamish, next to the Duwamish River. And then we have people who advocate to clean up the Duwamish River because it's polluted. And I want to let you know who is able to fish in that river today is the Muckleshoots. Now the Muckleshoots have a beautiful reservation, lots of casinos and bingo halls and da 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 da, but they never signed a treaty. Never signed a treaty. So I have a little, it's my hidden agenda to be a little irritated that they're able to fish in the Duwamish River and we're not. Excuse me. <laughs> I hit my microphone. But that, that's the deal. So, uh, and one thing about political stuff, I was told, and I don't even have to, I don't even have to even reach out to what's going on because people will call. Well, we got this message. The reason that we're not able to get recognition is that there's tribes that don't want us to have recognition. And you know why? I'll tell you. They think we want to build a casino. And I said, yeah, we do. I'm going to tell you where. And I'm joking, because I'm always joking. <laughs> I said, we want a casino in the middle of Elliott Bay, a beautiful ship. And the, the, the ferry's better move over. I mean, you know, and all that stuff. But I think that's a wonderful, because I remember when the Pialops had their, they had a casino was kind of, before they even had it, big giant casinos all over the place. They had one that was kind of set back, but it was, it, was, it was a big ship that they brought from somewhere in their casino. It was a beautiful place. But the thing that really irritates me is that to oppose us because we want a casino. Never in my involvement in 40 years did my council vote, well, the reason we want recognition is we want a casino. But my daughter, who works in the office, said, you know, Mom, if we ever got acknowledged, we have the right because we got sovereignty and we can have a casino. But I always applaud these, these beautiful tribes all over the place who have casinos. If they're doing good for their people, I find nothing wrong with that. But if we're not cleaning up the drugs and the suicide and, the, and everything else that go back, then I, I do not applaud them at, that, in, in any shape or form. And um, you can get upset with me, but that's how I feel, because you can do good with your money if you're making a lot of, and they, and, and they have a lot of casinos. I mean, look at the Pialps. Now, I'm gonna get back to the tribes who oppose us. Muckleshoot, Pialp, they don't have anything. The Pialp tribe, they don't have anything, right? But they oppose us. Um, What's the other tribe? Oh, we share the same chief, Suquamish. I'm part Suquamish. And the leader said, we can't support the Duwamish. But I, I'm, I don't know if he's Snoqualmie or, uh, I mean, I'm not, I don't know if he's Suquamish or whatever, but he opposes us. And it's the reason that we might get a casino. The other tribe is, there's three tribes, four tribes. Oh, Snoqualmie. Not just no call me. They're, 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 they support us. Well, I forgot that one. But there's these tries that oppose us because we want a casino. That's ridiculous. Because we do so much better with these tribes who do have casinos. And I, like I said, I applaud them. But if they're not good, doing good for their families or their resources to help other tribes, then forget it. But I, I don't forget it. But I, um, I, I. <laughs> I don't forget that, but anyway. Um, the tribes that, that were fighting for, uh, for, for uh, recognition at that time was the Sami, Snoqualmie, the Stilicum. You know, anybody know where the Stilicum is? 
they're still, they're, they're, they're still surviving. The Snohomish, which is up north, well, they said, oh, they just went to the Tulalip. Oh, that's, I'm, that's the other tribe. Tulalip, Muckleshoot, Puyallup, and um, Suquamish. And, the, and I, I, don't wanna, I don't want you to tell anybody, but I was born in Tulalip. <laughs> well, I, I didn't, you know, you don't choose your parents. Do you choose your parents? <laughs> no, no, no. But that was, that, oh, they had, a, they had an Indian hospital there, and that's where the moms went to have their babies. And my sister and I were, was born in Tulalip. Well, the Tulalip people who never signed a treaty opposed the Duwamish tribe on fishing and acknowledgement. I, d I don't get it. I mean, I came back from D.C. one time, and they said, well, somebody back, and we was at this big uh, meeting, and they said, go back and ask the tribes why they oppose you. And, and uh, w so we all went, there was a bunch of us tribes, we went to Tulalip and met in their community center. And they said, well, they, they, they were said it was because of fishing. Well, I don't understand that. It didn't make sense what they said, but you know, when people testify or they try to, you know, lie or fudge the truth, they'll say anything, but it was, it was the fishing. But then on the other hand, I think that the tribes in the Puget Sound should be advocating and, and restoring the fishing because I hear so many stories that we're losing our fishing and our whales and all that stuff. Not that we eat whale, do we? <laughs> None of us eat whales. But anyway, that is, that, that's really sad that these four tribes have to oppose the Duwamish. And it's because of money. Well, I, I speak out. I said, I think it's greed. But don't they have enough money? I'm, I, and I was just talking to this lady there about Muckleshoot. Well, that's the reason I, I'm not really in love with the Muckleshoot leadership. Because my brother married a gal from, from Auburn. And, and you know what? She was Muckleshoot. <laughs> but I love my sister-in-law. But anyway, and then... And then <laughs> And then my three nephews and my niece, they're Muckleshoot. But they, they, they're very outspoken as supporting their poor old aunt who has been trying to you know, correct the justice. But uh, that was the reason I'm, I don't hate these people, but I, I don't understand their theory because it is the casino and money, which is unfortunate. Anyway, um, anyway, the other tribe would be Jamestown Sklalem. You know where that is? That's, that's way over there. Well, you have to go north, but you have to go that way. And uh, they call it Stride. Um, it's, an, it's really amazing that um, the political warfare that we go through um, in trying to correct injustice has been dealt not only to our tribe, but other tribes. Now, what happened here in this when I was running around with all these, these tribes going back to D.C. and testifying and going to um, um, uh, different native organizations where we advocate for each other. Um, and then the next thing that Breath knows is that some of these tribes get recognized. The Sammy's tribe, Snoqualmie. Oh, one time I was at a tribal meeting. I'll tell you this story. And he said, I have to talk to you, Cecile. And this is the, this is the chairman of the Samish tribe. Because we're asking for support of all these tribes to support us on our acknowledgement process. He said, the reason I can't, the reason I can't support you, Cecile, is we, our machines are, they, got, they don't have a casino, but they got machines. So we can't speak up because they'll take the machines away from it. And I suppose the machines were down in Muckleshoot or whatever. And I thought, well, that's, that's not very nice. To, I mean, he, he's got casino you know, uh, machines, but he said, I can't speak up for you. So he turned his back on me. So the Snoqualmies, uh, they're doing quite well. Everybody, anybody went to their casino? OK. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. No, I've been up there because uh, 
the leaders up there, we went up there, we, uh, we had a birthday party for uh, one of my, um, we had lunch up there in their beautiful um, casino there. But yeah, I've been there. With, and, the, and the casino people are my friends. But they're busy. They're busy trying to, they got casino and they're trying to run that beautiful facility. It's really wonderful, if you have a chance, not to gamble, go up there and have lunch. I mean, I'm telling you, it's really, really nice. And uh, even, even though she went there, she, are, I think, is she the only one that, did you go up there too? Yeah, it's very nice, yeah, yeah. Um, Jamestown Sklalem, now the chairman of that tribe, he, he's been there, he said, I support, support uh, the Duwamish, the but they don't advocate for us. I think the point I'm trying to say that politically, these people have a lot, a lot of ammunition that they could speak up on behalf of the tribe who is suffering the injustice of being not recognized. Anyway, the college, the college tribe, uh, and I, on my father's side, he's part college, and those people got recognized, and I guess they're building a casino too. I haven't been down there, but I used to see those people when they came to our store meeting. Well, that's okay, but I get the point I'm trying to make here is that they got recognized and they, they went like this. And they turned their back on people who are still struggling. And I'm telling you who's still struggling is the Snohomish, uh, Snohomish the Stillicum, the Duwamish, Chinook. And there's another thing I would suggest to you um, that says a lot. Has anybody seen the Promised Land? Okay. I think you better get the film and show it because it's about Duwamish and Chinook struggle on recognition. They, the Chinook tribe got recognized before we did, was invited to the White House, had lunch with all those dignitaries, and they were delighted. The chairman and his wife were walking downtown after the lunching and somebody called him on the phone and said, we're taking away your recognition. So they took their recognition. So they're struggling, just like we are, to get their acknowledgement back. Chinook, and, and this film, The Promised Land, I'm not sure about the title, but it's about these two tribes trying to seek acknowledgement. And um, so anyway, and then I just heard this week that uh, uh, this film has been shown all over the place. Now I hear that they're working on this film going back to the, the Smithsonian, which is in DC. Um, so to get the money to travel back there, I don't know if I wanna go back to DC, but you know where I went? This is really marvelous. They sh they shown the promised land in Hollywood. I said, okay, we're going. <laughs> so we, they, sh they, they took the film to Hollywood uh, a bunch of us flew down to Hollywood because I'd never been there. And we stayed there and they showed the film. We did, it was flew in on a Sunday. They showed the film that night and we flew home. But I can say I've been to Hollywood. And it was quite nice because it was, what had happened was it was being shown by a Native American festival and they won a, they won a little award for uh, being shown down in Hollywood. So I thought, hooray, hooray. Now, it's marvelous that they're working on it, that the Smithsonian wants to see this film, and that's why I'm suggesting that if you want to see the struggle of people acknowledgement of uh, the promised land. And um, I don't know where you're going to get the film, but maybe you can call my office and somebody knows where you can get the film that you could show it, maybe to some of your classes. And, and, and it's, it's about the, extra, the struggle of these two tribes. Anyway, I was going to show that at the end of my speech, but I, I got caught away. <laughs> because, you know, it's, uh, um, I don't like me in it, but uh, there's a lot of marvelous people that they're interviewing on uh, the acknowledgement and recognition. And uh, I think that you might have a little bit of understanding of these people who are speaking from the Chinook, their people, the people that talk about it, and people from our tribe, too. Um, Anyway, um, let me see what else I want to share with you. Um, um, one thing that we're doing today, because we have to, is 
with the acknowledgement we don't get no federal money from the DC uh, authorities. And, uh, and we are now uh, in the midst of, especially when it's 2018, we're, we're trying to raise money to maintain our longhouse. And has anybody been to our longhouse? Wonderful. Well, you ought to come on Saturday. We're having an open house. It'll be our ninth or 10th anniversary of being open. So show up. And my daughter said, Mom, you should bake some cookies. I said, OK, I might bake some cookies. <laughs> but all it is is an open house. And then one other thing. Oh, good thing I brought that up. One of the things, I think at noon or 2 o'clock, they're going to show the promised land. It's about two hours. So it is just to drop by and just say that you came and seen the, the long house, and it is an open house, and there's not going to be anything, you know, a, a heavy schedule. Just that come in, and the promised land is going to be shown. It's going to serve a little coffee, tea, and whatever, and, and come join us. And you don't have to stay. Just drop by, sign your name, and leave some money. <laughs> no, I, I'm just teasing, but um, we are, we, well, because we have to maintain our longhouse. Everything costs money. And, uh, what, yeah, and another terrible thing that happened before Christmas. Evidently, because we're so busy, I'm, I'm busy, uh, my only job is to advocate on this acknowledgement and recognition process. Now, you know that when something goes wrong, something goes wrong. Well, our electricity and our heating went off. Our refrigerator quit. We didn't have no light. I mean, anything was going to happen, quit. And then one of our tribal members, which I, I questioned their intelligence, had a wedding on a day there was no heating, no lights. <laughs> and, uh, but she wanted to have her wedding there. And they said that they were joking around later. They said if, if I showed up, I was going to kick everybody out. I did call back there. I said, there is no heating, there is no lights, and you're having a wedding in the longhouse? And so uh, they kind of hurried along because they knew that if I came down there, I was going to kick everybody out. The reason being, well, no, you can't, you can't do that because uh, you, we might get in trouble. But I, I felt bad, but she wanted to have her wedding there. And so she had her wedding, and it was dark, and they were trying to pick up their stuff and get out. And, you know, it, well, you know, a month ago, it, it was dark at 4 o'clock, yeah. so they were still there. I, I'm telling you, the intelligence of these people. But I'm, hope that, <laughs> I'm hoping that she's happy now that she's married and that she was married in the longhouse. And I'm just encouraging you that we have lights now and we have heat and come on over. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So anyway, we are, yeah, we're actually always raising money. And, we, and I'm, I'm amazed if I'm, if I'm there, because I only work part time, but come in there and try to take care of business for the tribe. And I'm amazed if I come out in the lobby, there's people that come from all of the United States, st uh, the United States and all over the world. I, I can't believe it. I said, well, how do you find it? They said that they catch a cab, or they come from the airport, or they're coming back, and they're going to the airport, and they're gonna, they, but they had to come here. And I'm, I'm always so happy that they come and find us. So there's no excuse to come to our longhouse <laughs> on Saturday to say hello. Because they, I, I, I can't believe it. So they hear about us. And I just applaud these wonderful people who travel all over the world and then come over us by the Duwamish River to our culture center to visit us. And, and, and not because they're curious. And I, I find that the European people are more curious about the history of the United States than they are. And we should be a little more better than them, but we're not. But I think isn't it amazing that they care about the history of the United States and the native people, and they do. And anyway, but like I said, we're always trying to raise money, and um, um, we've uh, well, one of our people left, and so we're raising money because we need more staff people. We have a lot of wonderful volunteers that come and help us, and I was just told we got a lot of volunteers that are coming on Saturday. But actually, 
um, the volunteers that are going to come on Saturday on our open house, uh, they really are not going to be doing too much because we're not cooking unless they want to serve a, a tray of cookies or something and, and make sure there's enough coffee and tea and juice. I think we should have some punch too, but I'm, I'm just encouraging the guys to drop by. If you've never been to Longhouse, you've got to come and, uh, and join us for the day. Um, let me see now. And I, as I always say to everybody that, um, that even though people don't think we exist, and somebody needs to find this out because you guys are going to college, because I read this the other day, that the federal government does not honor any treaty in the United States. So the Point Elliott Treaty of 185 is not honored. All right, some, some get the benefits, some of you are recognized, but I'm telling you, if we were the first signers of the Point Elliott in 1855 when we lost everything and everybody got resources after us, there's something wrong. So, but they said the Point Elliott Treaty, and I, try, I called the Department of Justice to see how come nobody is realizing that we do have a, uh, a, a treaty and why, aren't they, why isn't our tribe being fully recognized by the federal government by giving up so much? And it's not fair, but uh, not fair is not fair, I guess. But I'm telling you, as I always tell it, we're still here. Because our people are not sitting on a reservation, but they're all over the place. And we, I think we're pretty close to 600 people. Well, they, and I encourage that when my brother was fishing, uh, and my cousin and a lot of people on the tribal were fishing on Duwamish River, um, my brother joined the Suquamish tribe because he could fish there, and we, we got the descendancy because my grandma is, and Chief Seattle is buried over there, and my grandma, so we're part Suquamish too, uh, that we can, that they can fish in, in, in the waters, and, um, and that's good. Uh, because we, well, I was, I encourage, in fact, I encourage, if you, if you could, if you could dip, sign up with another tribe and, and join them for fishing rights, then go. Because they like to say, you know, they said, oh, everybody left the Duwamish tribe. No, and the point I'm trying to be, tell you is the Duwamish is still here. We're still here. But I, I'm, I'm writing my book. I'm writing my book of 40 years. I would like to complete my book for the Duwamish tribe and then just give us back our knowledge and I can retire to finish my book. I was just trying to, it's about this big, the stuff that I wrote, but you have to put it in a book form. So anyway, and then I can sell the book and get a little bit of the pot and give the rest of the tribe. Anyway, um, I've tried to kind of ball part about the, our, whole, our, our whole tribe. But Duwamish means the people the inside, and we're still here. And that's it. <laughs> Hello, and thank you for being here, You're sharing welcome. with us all of these beautiful experiences that you have, but also the, the ones that they are not good. I would like to know, you mentioned something about education. What part of the deal of, of the trial they respect about education for your people? And what would you like to see more for your children about education? Education is very important. Well, I just told a story to our lovely lady over here. Education is very important. Uh, my mother, who was living on Queen Anne, came to me and she said, I'm going back to school. Mom was 50 years old. So she went to CLU and she, got a she was studying medicine because she liked nursing. And then they left, my folks left and went to the Bay Area to Hayward, California. That's south of Oakland. Mother got two degrees, two degrees. So I say to you, education is really important. And I had told my mother one time when she was up there, I said, I want to become a lawyer. And she looked at me with that pain look. Well, then, what are you doing? In other words, I could have went and went to school and became a lawyer, 
but I was truly involved and committed and loving the injustice that has been dealt to the Duwamish tribe. And that, that's where my commitment was. So, and I love lawyers. <laughs> they help you. Yes? Um, I was wondering, you said that in order for DC government to recognize tribes that members can't be from more than one tribe. But you also mentioned that some of your members from multiple tribes are members of other tribes too, like your chief from the Snoqualmie tribe is also technically Duwamish too, but they recognize him as a tribe but not you. So how exactly do they get around that even though they're not supposed to? Um, I'm not quite sure how I can answer that. I mean, I mean, I claim to be Chinook on my dad's side. I'm part Collitz, Suquamish, Snoqualmie, Snohomish. Uh, but my commitment is the Duwamish tribe. So I, I, I'm not sure I'm answering. Tell me again. I'm wondering if DC says that one of the ways that tribes get recognition is that they can't be members of other tribes. But oh, I, certain I get, tribal yeah. members, they are members of other tribes, like you just said, that you're a member of you know, multiple tribes. How does that well, play Well, I've got the descendancy. I'm not, a, I'm not the member of these other tribes. Mm -hmm. But I, I am what I am. I've got the descending from both my mom and my dad, which is the Collets and the Chinook on father's side. And then my mother's side is Snoqualmie, Suquamish. I was telling my daughter, she says, my gosh, this whole bunch. I said, but that's what we are. We have the descendancy from these different tribes. And, and, but it's all saying you cannot be with another recognized tribe right. because, I don't know. Why don't you get on the phone and call back to DC? I will do that, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I understand we have this wonderful website, uh, and there's also DTS at questoffice.net. Or drop it by and give it in my hand. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I always have to turn it over to somebody else. It's amazing. I'll tell you what happened before Christmas. That's a good question. Um, this, this letter, they're always handing my mail, and it was, I opened it up, and it was a check for $5,000, and they didn't want to, they, is they didn't want to tell them who they were. I love it. I don't know who that person is, but they do. We get a lot of donations before Christmas. I'm glad that we have Christmas once a year because people get generous and, and, uh, help, and, and not only help me, but help everybody that needs help. Yeah. What now? Oh, you know what? You know what? I, um, we had to hire somebody to come in. Somebody was, who was very ignorant because he fooled around with two panels and didn't know what he was doing. Cost us a lot of money. And then we brought this other person in and they, they fixed everything. So, but it cost us a lot of money. But then on the other hand, we were so blessed with people donating money so that we, weren't, we didn't go in the hole. And then there's another thing that I, I, I want you to know about, and you, you can, good thing you asked that question. I should have wore that t-shirt, or you can get one on Saturday. It's called Pay Rent to Duwamish. And what it is, it was created by not us, it was created by these volunteers to help the Duwamish tribe to maintain our base. And so the last figure I heard at our last meeting for two months, they've raised seventeen thousand dollars. It's probably more, so, but it's called pay rent, and you're paying rent to the Duwamish tribe because you're on our land, all of you. Well, I don't know where you live, but <laughs> <laughs> but if you give up fifty-four thousand acres, you're probably on the fringe. You know what I mean? Isn't that isn't that something? I I love these volunteers who created that. Uh, they were even being questioned, well, why are you doing this? And then they said, well, Duwamish gave up 54,000 acres, we should pay rent. 
And I, I, I love these volunteers. Yeah, I think they're wonderful for creating that because I never would have thought of that. So does that help you? Great. Anybody else? I just want to say thank you again for coming and sharing um, and allowing us to be on your land, although I know it hasn't been voluntary. Um, I'm interested, the Duwamish are kind of in this, aren't there similar situations with a lot of other um, tribes around the country whose land is under big cities and the, the, there's an there's a endemic problem around the country with recognition of urban tribes, I assume, because if there's recognition of that, then that would show <laughs> the incredible amount of, of, you know, the incredible amount that's owed to those tribes. But is it, is it, is it true that, like I thought I heard, but I don't know if it's true that there's no tribes around the country who have land um, that cities of, settler cities have been built, built on that have got recognition, and I assume it's because they don't, that's, it's a very, it would be a very expensive recognition if it went through or whatever. Is that true or is that, is that not true? Are there, are there any cities that have recognized the? Um, uh, all across the country. Really? Okay. Yeah, because there was nobody here before they started arriving on the East Coast. And the thing that really, is troubling is that they forget that there were Native Americans here first and they push them out and shove them and everything else and take over their land and forget that they had the land first and so I hope that answers your question be that I'm we're not the only Native group that suffers that that injustice of being pushed and being on our land I, I don't care where you go no, you I guess what I mean is the, that injustice is especially shared, it's, a, it's kind of the same situation with other tribes who have cities on their land, because I've heard like the, the tribes have got recognition, like you were talking about with Muckleshoot and Snoqualmish, are ones that are kind of outside of the cities, right? But it's, it's, it's tribes that have land that their cities on top of always have a, is it true that they always have trouble with getting that official recognition status? I'm sure they do, I mean, uh I, in fact, I just heard last week, I, I, I've got to get on and, or ask somebody to help that find it. They, they said that they just, three tribes last week got recognition. Now, I don't understand. I mean, I hate even calling our law firm to ask them about where it's the process of our appeal because I get the same answer. Mm -hmm. And that makes me frustrated and sad. So I, I don't want to be sad. So I don't call the lawyer because I don't want to hear the same jazz that okay, it's still sitting back there in D.C. But I w it's always my hope that the outcry of people who live here in Seattle say it's about time that the Duwamish gets their, their recognition. Because, you know, one thing I say today, I'm saying I don't see the other tribes trying to help the homeless people. And I say if our tribe was recognized, that would be the, one of the things that we could help the homeless people because it's disgusting to see these poor people up in the, up in the woods in their, in their little camps and stuff. And, and even though the new mayor came in and said she was going to deal with it, I know she's only been on about a, six weeks, but come on, it's time to deal with the homeless people these days. I mean, they're there. And so I just say of acknowledgement with the Duwamish tribe, because we're homeless. I mean, we own two thirds of an acre, but you know, it's not, that's our res. I, well, it's our land. But anyway, that's the point. Yes? Honey, I'm gonna, honey, honey, I'm going to tell you a little story. I have been back in D.C. knocking on our legislators here in this, and they totally ignore us. And you know why they ignore us? And this is true. Why are they ignoring the Duwamish tribe when they're being paid by tribes who've got the money to be quiet? You see what I'm saying? This is what's happening. Because I've been in uh, uh, Murray's office, 
Jewel James, I mean, what's her name? Jewel James, oh maybe, no, Sally Jewel. Sally Jewel was with the Department of the Interior, lived over in West Seattle. She could have she could have called the President of the United States and said, it's about time the Duwamish got their, settled the appeal, and she totally ignored us. She's now retired now because we have a new president, and our new president doesn't like indigenous people, which I think it takes in Indian people. So, um, it's, it's really sad. But these legislators, and, and McDermott, does anybody remember McDermott? He was, a, he was a, with the, uh, yeah. He introduced about three bills for, um, to recognize their tribe, but he started it, but he didn't do any lobbying back in DC. You can put a bill in there, but if you don't do anything, it's just gonna sit there and it dies. And he, he, did, he made the commitment. But the two ladies that represent our, 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 our uh, territory totally ignore us. And I, like I've been back in DC in their offices, meeting with their people, nothing. <coughs> yes, ma'am? Huh? Well, uh, uh, Murray, and I can't remember the other lady. She's got, huh? Yeah, that one. <laughs> Did you hear that? Well, see, I don't, I don't know why they get reelected because they don't take care of really serious problems. or move on, or retire. Yeah. Well, I, I, I don't have any respect. I don't have any respect for these two ladies because I have knocked on their doors, wrote them letters. Uh, other people have wrote letters to these two. It's a big zero. Well, sign a petition and send it back to the Bureau of Indian Affairs and ask why is the appeal sitting on somebody's desk? That's all. The Bureau of Indian Affairs. I don't think if you send it to the president, he's got enough troubles on his desk. Yeah. <laughs> Would she say no? Oh yeah, no, yeah, no. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yes, dear. Um, why don't you pose that question to us, to the office? You want to print out of what's going on? Well, we should create one. I think we do have one somewhere um, regarding this whole. Well, I, here's one. I, listen, uh, this was, uh, says the government official has lied to the Duwamish people for more than a century. It's time for the deceit to end. You should have a copy of this. Yeah, this is good. This is a, a 
this was, uh, I was interviewed, and um, it's pretty well to the point of everything, I think. <laughs> Yeah, I thought, that, I said, oh, this is a good article. That so if people went there, maybe who would you think at your office? Yeah. Like if later in the next few days you want to get some up, you can go to the uh, doors of the office and go to the third floor to show you something there. So we'll make multiple copies. Other questions? Well, thank you. I think you know everything. What does Duwamish mean? What? That's it. You get an A.